What's up guys? It's time to start our course in reactor engineering. We are now in block number one, which is essentially chapter one on your book, Fogler's book of, I remember it's uh, basic elements of chemical reaction engineering. And yeah, we're going to see uh, the introduction and the molar balances. We're going to explain, of course, what's a molar balance, how to do it, how to apply it to a reactor, and essentially we're going to find out some equations or design equations for those reactors. So this, this video, it's essentially section number one. We're going to see the introduction to reactors. What type of reactors do we have? Uh, some reactor kinetics and the uses of those reactors. Then we're going to see a lot of uh, pictures. I'm going to try to explain you how to recognize or to know what's a reactor in the chemical industry. And in the second video, we're going to jump to molar balances, which are done essentially in batch reactor, continuous tier, tank reactor, plug flow reactor, and packed bed reactor. But right now, we're going to see just the introduction, introduction to reactors. So the first thing I want to let you know is uh, what's a reactor. A reactor is, I try to look out for many, many definitions, but I think the most common sense uh, definition is this one. It's an equipment used to carry on a chemical reaction. So essentially, if you have a mixing unit and you're not doing a chemical reaction, that's not a reactor. But if you are carrying on, I don't know, A turns into B, then you are doing a chemical reaction, therefore that's a reactor. And actually, there's also types of pipe. If you're using this pipe just to transport uh, material, and you don't know you're transforming A to B, technically speaking, this is a reactor. Of course, we don't want to do that. We want this pipe to, trans to transfor transport A into, of course, only A. We don't want transformations. But technically speaking, if you have something, a device or equipment that transforms a chemical reaction, then you have a reactor. So yes, chemical engineers design reactors to maximize net present value for the given reaction. So that's kind of uh, fancy. What does that mean? It means essentially you want to improve the reaction in order to get more profit. So let's keep doing. How do we do that? The designers, which looks like a fashion design, but no, it's not fashion, it's uh, engineering design or reactor design, ensure that they got the highest efficiency possible towards the desired product. So you're turning A into B. Of course, you want to turn all A into B. Sometimes you're not going to be, uh, to be able to do that. So you're going to find out or design a reactor or try to change temperature, pressures, flows, whatever you need to do to improve that conversion rate. And actually you're going to base all this in money. So of course if I tell you I'm going to increase 1% yield but you're going to need to invest $1 million, well you need to check out if it's actually worth that 1%. So yeah, that's the highest yield of product. And as I told you before, you need to require the least amount of money to first of all purchase or to invest and to operate because one thing is having the reactor, the other thing is actually operating. You will need someone there taking care, someone that cleans, someone that operates, control, temperature, heating, cooling, uh, piping, uh, pumping, compression, all those stuff that are behind the operation. So why do we need reactors? Well, uh, we want to convert material. That's what I love chemical engineering. It's about transforming, converting, producing materials which are not that useful or which maybe they are useful, but you want to turn them into something else. So let's say you have this low volume material and I love it because you use your knowledge, your brain, and you transform it into more profitable materials. So that's why I love chemical engineering. Let's do some magic with our knowledge and we get more money with that. Uh, we do it because we want to have a specific unit for that operation. So 
at least we know that this tank is where our chemical reaction is taking place. So if you don't have in the, let's imagine this plant, or chemical plant, you have a problem, you're not getting the yield or the conversion you want, you go to the reactor, you study the reactor here, you don't need to check this out or this out or this piping here. Maybe eventually if you find out that the reactor is fine, you will need to do that. But the first thing you want to do is to go directly to the reactor. So that's why we are doing this in one reactor and not in many operation units. So yeah, essentially you want a specific point or space where the reaction is being carried. And not only that, you also want the reactor to control the reaction in a safe manner. So if you don't even know where your reaction is taking place, well, that's not that safe. Uh, if you know you're taking place in this tank, well, at least you're going to make that tank the most safe uh, place in the plant or at least that it doesn't explode or leak or whatever stuff or thing may happen that may be hazardous for health or environment or workers, whatever. And the thing here is that it's easy to maximize efficiency. Why? Because then you're going to work fully on this reactor and not in the whole plant. So you can, I don't know, change the volume, change temperature of flows, pressure of flows, concentration, all those uh, process variables that uh, affect the conversion rate or yield, you can change them. So that's kind of cool because you're going to change also levels, temperatures, inlet, all those things that you can change, you're going to do them in this specific unit. So the next thing we're going to see is the types of reactors. There are many, uh, let's say, uh, types of reactor or how to order them or classify them. So I brought you the most common and the ones you're going to be using, for example, batch or you can say also is that semi-batch process or a continuous process. This is in general, you have a plant operating all the day, all the year long, you transform A to B, let's say, in this reactor, and you have a flow of 10 kilograms per hour here, and you take out 10 kilograms per hour of B, and this is A. It's an example. A batch is essentially just, you got this tank, you fill it up, you let time pass, it reacts, and you take it out. A semi-batch is a mixture between a batch and a continuous. That's one form. Another type of uh, reactor classification is either is it catalytic or not catalytic. When it's catalytic, of course, as the name implies, you have a catalyt uh, catalysator or catalyst. And when you do not have it, well, it's a non-catalytic reaction. Then homogeneous reactor, which means they are the same phases, let's say liquid liquid or solids with solids. And then you have the heterogeneous phase. For example, when you have this, let's say a, you have a gas here, and this is like a packaging unit, this is solid. So they react or they do a, a process here and they interact between solid and gas, which is a heterogeneous reaction. And yeah, you take out these here out. So that's also important. And the most, I think the most important uh, thing to know is these categories, which is the reactors we're going to be studying in this course, this introduction to uh, chemical engineering uh, reactors. So the batch reactor is the most classic and obvious one. Then comes the semi-continuous reactor which I told you is a part batch and part continuous. Then we go to a continuous tier tank reactor, which is the most, I think, basic and easy to model one. You have a tank, and as the name says, it's continuous. So you have this flow and this flow, and you mix, 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 and react and take out the product. So as you can see, it's a tank, which is steered continuously, and it makes reactions. Then comes the plug flow reactor, which is essentially some pipelines here. You are reacting the material in the pipes, so you got A, and it starts reacting all over here, and you get out B. And then the packed bed reactor, which I told you this little example, 
you have this reactor, you got this pack bed here, and you are reacting, I don't know, gas with the solid, and you take out the product. So those are the type of reactors, please. Uh, this is kind of theoretical. I know it because I've done too much of that. I actually didn't like memorize it. You don't need to memorize it. You're going to be working with them and you're going to see the characteristic of each of them. For example, continuous are in steady state. Heterogeneous normally implies a packet bed here. Batch reactor it means that they are time dependent and with the time you're going to recognize each of these concepts. And now I brought you some pictures. I want you to realize what's a reactor. Look this tank. You can see this is like the over part and this will be the whole tank. This is an inlet maybe and this is the outlet here or maybe this is the inlet and this is a level. Then you got this part here which is the where the agitation unit goes. So you have this unit here, it goes all the way down. Of course this this should be 90 degrees. This is let's say lying down. So you need to stand this tank up and you will have this your agitation unit here and you're going to mix it. And this as you can see is a tank and you have this uh, the steering system here so uh, as you can see it's a continuous steer tank reactor because you have the inlet here and maybe outlet I don't see the outlet but it should be there and this is the manhole what's a manhole is essentially a place in which a man can go in and you clean it or you can check if there's something stuck or something like that then we have steel SC STR or a continuous steer tank reactor, you can see here is the thing we were talking about and this is the steering unit but we got this now, a jacket system, what's a jacket system? we're going to see that later but essentially it's just a lot of tubes that are hitting this reactor you can see you have many inlets here, made for levels, temperature sensors and the manhole now we are in a plug flow reactor as I told you before, it's essentially just pipelines. They go here and go here. And as they move, they are reacting the materials. So eventually, if you were having A plus B here and your reaction is something like this, well, you're taking out C out here. The same here. Uh, now we have a different arrangement and you actually cover this, so maybe it's more like aesthetic. Maybe you're selling the reactors, you want to do it as aesthetic as possible. Uh, but actually, in the chemical industry, you're not looking that into aesthetics. You are more into usefulness, efficiency, and that. And it makes sense, because if I were an engineer, I wouldn't care. It is not fashion at all. But if it works, it turns my material A into B, and I can sell B way much um, expensive, I will I will not care about the fashion elements. And then we have a packed bed reactor. It's essentially the same tank. This is a diagram. Because if I give you the photo, you will not be able to see the packaging, of course, because this is this will be cover of all metal walls. You have the reactants, you take them here, maybe this is gas. And this is a catalyst. Uh, you have the catalyst on this bed or these solid parts. So they react, they make their reactions and you take out the products. It's not that difficult or complex as it seems, it's so easy. Then, yeah, still uh, we're talking about packed bed reactors. As I told you before, you can see you there's nothing, it's only metal, you can see the packed bed. So, you could have different arrangements of pellets. Pellets are these balls or these catalyst. These contain the catalyst. So you could either have a slick or slim here, or you can have a wider, you have many small uh, pellets or big pellets. And obviously it depends on what are your requirements on pressure drop, you want to increase conversion, to increase the surface area. There are many, many things that you might want to consider. It's not just about, okay, just pull them up here. So we are now in this subcategory, which are the lab reactors, or reactors that are done on lab scale. 
you can see there are simply you've been in a chemical a, or a chemistry lab you can recognize this is like a small beaker you have all the supports you got this little condenser which has nothing to do with the industrial condenser and yeah all you have all this electric control device the you got this constant pressure funnel all these discharge level of course you have an inlet and as you can see this is done to improve the reaction so you, if you can improve them in the lab you can improve them maybe at the larger scale so the same here normally you use chemistry uh, workers or chemists or even also chemical engineers to improve the reaction the thing here is that you want to improve the yield or maybe you want to lower a temperature or heat requirements or uh, viscosity so you get lower pumping uh, cost all these things that might interest you are here and normally you also want to model that so if you can model the lab one or the lab experiment you can see how I don't know many transfer materials maybe this is momentum transport this can be a heat and a heat transfer or not this actually let me let's say this is a heat or temperature profiles these are momentum or velocity profiles you can see all the agitation here and maybe this is the mass profile how they are changing this let's say the blue one is A and the red one is B and A is turning into B so you can see how at the beginning you have a lot of A and the, at the end you have a lot of B which makes sense because you are transforming A into B so that's why you can also get some lab rea uh, reactors you want to improve and model and eventually just get a better version of your real reactor in the in the chemical industry so the same thing here you can recognize them maybe this is a CSTR small scale and this is a PBR of course you have this packed bed as you can see you have a lot of pellets so I am guessing these are bed a packed bed in which you get here the gas and you take the out so yeah same th same thing here you have actually this is also a packed bed reactor but you cannot see the packaging only here but you need to be watching closely and yeah essentially that's lab reactors we're going to see a new trend which is micro reactors essentially as the name says micro 10 to the minus 6 meters so why do, you, do we use this because we get many at the micro scale we get many many good things you can control better essentially it's all about transport phenomena hopefully you've seen that before because you're going to get that you get laminar flow and you get more pressure control and heat controls and all that stuff and yeah you can see another here you get, you get a better control of the reactants and the thing here is once you got this micro reactor working as you wish you can get I don't know maybe 10 to the 6 units which is about uh, 1 million or maybe you just want 1000 and depending on the flow of course and your requirements but you can get this very scale up uh, scale with scale scale up abilities so the same thing here this instead of using piping you got these hoses small hoses here instead of getting huge pumps you got small pumps and yeah that's the micro reactor trend now just to let you know about thermal insulation uh, you've seen this in heat energy or uh, mass balance maybe uh, heat transport operations whatever but I'm going to explain you once again just to let you know so these spots right here this is a with the thermal camera all these as you can see if it's yellow it's hot or let's say it's a high temperature and if it's black it's low temperature so what you want to do is low temperatures because the ambient temperature will be around 25 celsius or I think 70 Fahrenheit about like that so you don't want high temperature because high temperatures implies there's a difference in temperature and difference in temperature means that you're going to lose heat 
with the ambient temperature or the ambient air. So you don't want that. You want to avoid all these little points here. And how do you do that? You do it by isolating or thermally isolating the reactor. So look at this. Instead of losing all the heat, you just cover the reactor, cover the inlets or all the piping, and you get this kind of arrangement. So look at this. You have all these pipes are covered. This is not metal, this is isolating material. And you also cover the heating vessel. What type of material you use? They use a lot, but this is how they look. It's like a foam like or like as best like. You also use you cover it with aluminium and yeah, essentially that's the thermal isolation. One thing I want to I want you to let you know is let me go to the next picture. I remember going to my first chemical industry and I thought these were pipes. And I wasn't that bad because there are actually pipes inside of it, but I thought these were the whole pipes. And that's not true actually. You got this isolation inside this metal. So you see the pipe here. It's actually covering the isolation material. So maybe the actual size of this pipe will be, I don't know, this size. So even though you see a huge pipe or a huge tube here, you got this small tube here because it's super hot and you got around it all this material. So that's about thermal isolation, just a overview so you can know like there's isolating problems in reactors so if you want to keep a temperature for example you want to be at the same temperature is a thermical you will need to take care about that or if simply you don't want to expend that much money in heat requirement you will need to buy some isolation material and that's everything for this chap uh, this section section number one let me tell you what we've seen so far we saw a small introduction to reactors type of reactors reactor kinetics uh, the uses of these reactors and well this is I just move it to here. What's left is section 2, molar balances of batch reactor, continuous steel tank reactors, uh, plug flow reactors, pack bed reactors. We're going to see now the mathematics and we're going to derive an equation that helps us to model these four reactors. So thank you for watching guys. If you are interested in how we can model these tanks or these reactors, please just go to the next video. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.